Welcome back uh, after that short note. Now we're in chapter 20, part G, and that's on page 12. So we're going to look at accounting for financing type leases by the lessor. Now, I have to include some new calculations here for the lessor that we're going to use in the end. So the first thing, the gross investment, so these are going to be three kind of little formulas. In the lease, and the lease payments receivable are equal to the undiscounted lease payments. If there are any executory costs included in it, you've got to take them out. So your question will either say the lease payment is $1,000 plus executory costs of $50 or Lease payment, including executory, equals a thousand fifty. So we only want the thousand. We've got to get rid of the fifty. So if they tell you like this, take out the fifty. Okay, that's what they mean by net of executory costs. So we're going to take the undiscounted lease payments plus the residual value, whether guaranteed or not. And we're going to do an example so you can see this. The net investment in the lease is equal to the gross investment in the lease discounted at the implicit rate or the fair value of the machine. The unearned interest revenue is the difference between gross and net investment. So let's, it sounds more complex than it actually is. Let's go through an example and uh, make some sense of it. So shared and leasing, they're the lessor, which has a fiscal year end of October 31st, follows us, signs an agreement on January 1st, 2020 to lease equipment to Irvin. Now we don't care about Irvin right now, we only heard it. Following information related to the agreement, the non lease is six years, no renewal option. The equipment has an estimated economic life of eight years. The assets cost to Sheridan was 316. The assets fair value is 316. The asset will revert to the lesser at the end of the lease term, at which time the asset is expected to have a residual value of this amount, 45384, is not guaranteed. The lessee assumes direct responsibility for all executory costs. So, um, and the agreement requires annual rent payments beginning on January 1st, 2020. So, assuming that Sheridan Leasing desires a 9% rate of return investment, calculate the amount of the annual rental payment that's required. And then we're gonna calculate gross and net investment and unearned interest. So divide this into two sections. We're going to do the calculation over here. So, if you from page four, it's the lessor that decides how much the rental payment is, which makes sense, right? So, we need to figure out what the payment is. So, present value is 316. I is 9% because we always go with the lessor's rate. N equals 6. The future value, what it's going to be worth at the end, is 45384. And there's something we have to be careful about. So compute the payment. Now, <coughs> what thing we have to remember, the BGN button has to be on because it's a lease. And remember we said the present value numbers and the future value and the payment are going to be opposite signs. So if this is positive, we have to make this negative. So we compute the payment and we get 5902. Oh, 
And it's nothing different from what we did on page four. So now here's the new part where we calculate the gross investment, the net investment, and the unearned interest. So gross investment is, if you read up top, the undiscounted lease payments with no executory costs. So that is 59092. And how many years are they going to pay it for? Six. So the lease is for six years. Then we take plus the residual value guaranteed or not. Now in this case it's not guaranteed, but we add it anyway. So that's going to work out to 399936. And that is going to become the lease receivable. So, as a lessor, we're going to get this from the lessee, and then when they're done with it, they're going to give it back, and the item is going to be worth approximately 45384. And if it's not, they're their loss, and uh, just like normal. Okay, now the net investment. is in the lease is equal to the gross investment discounted at the implicit rate or the fair value of the machine. So we've got both and they'll work out the same. So we took the present value of the gross investment. So we've got to take the present value of 59092 over six years and include the 45384. So really, that's what we did here in the little section. Right? Our payment, 59092, is for six years at the implicit rate, and we have the future value here. And balance comes to 316. So this is going to be 316,000 because we set our payments up that way. So, this is the assets fair value, because that's how payment. So, the unearned interest is the difference between gross and net. So it's the difference, which is just 399,936 minus 316,000, which is 83936. So those are the three pieces of information that we need, as well as the payment we calculated to do all the entries. So let's fill in our amortization table for the payments and see how it works. So you're always going to start with the balance of the net investment. So net investment starts here. Now notice here, this is one of those tables where they give you two lines. Sometimes they only give you one. And we've done examples both. So if they give you two lines, it's easy. The first one's just scratched off, and the balance we start with is 316. Now, what happens on the same day we sign the lease? We make a payment. Interest accrued yet? No, because it's the first day. So the net investor recovery is going to be 9092. So we get to take that balance off. So 316 minus 59092 is 256908. And so if we continue, the payment's not going to change. 
The difference is you're going to use the 9% because that's the lessors rate, and you're always going to use that because as the lessor you know it. So 9% times 256908 gives us 3122. We subtract um, the payment minus what the interest is. 59092 minus 23122 get 35970. Sorry, I didn't give you quite enough room. And here we take the balance 256908 minus 35970 to give 220938. And then you could go on and fill out the whole thing if you needed to. I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter so that they don't run over and um, get cut off in weird places. So I'm going to end now, and then we will meet with page 13 and the entries in the next video.